All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends, and today our topic is about the war between the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians. Uh, I hope my voice is coming good from your side. Please let me know if you have any problem. Uh, right now in the news, they are talking about a deal between Hamas and Israel. Uh, this is an Israeli news station, and they are talking about uh, a very soon deal. And the Egyptian, they are involving in that deal. כתבנו עם פרטים חדשים שאתה מביא על היוזמה החדשה להתנעת עסקה לשחרור חטופים. נכון מיכל, אז כפי שפרסמנו אתמול כאן במהדורה בישראל, עבדו לאחרונה על הצעות חדשות לקדם את המסע ומתן ולהתניע אותו למעשה, והיום הצוות המקצועי שמנהל את המסע ומתן, גם המוסד, גם שב"כ, גם uh, uh, צה"ל, למעשה גם ובעיקר ראש השב"כ רונן בר ואלוף במילואים ניצן אלון מציגים בפני קבינט המלחמה וגם הקבינט המורחב את ההצעות והאלטרנטיבות שלהם כדי להתניע את המסע ומתן כאשר כשמדברים על האלטרנטיבות. Anyway, just to make it short, so you know the, the game of the hostages, this is the whole point of the hostages. It is a weak or a weakness in the side of Israel. So you have an army who can easily destroy any country or the neighborhood. And they have a more than a hundred hostages in the hand of the terrorist. And those terrorists, they knew exactly why they did take the hostages. We killed the Jews, we robbed them, we raped them, and we kidnapped them. And when the Jews, they start or try to respond, is my, is my image coming good from your side? I don't know if YouTube is working or not. Do you hear me guys in uh, a rumble? Am I heard a rumble? Everything is good? All right. So the whole plan actually is simple. We kidnap them. And when they try to attack us, we say, listen, we have hostages. We will kill them if you come to us. I mean, we know the game, and this is what they do always. So the Israeli, you know, as you see here in the TV, uh, Israeli, uh, they are not people of war. And they don't want war. And there's a group of them who they are very liberals. Those liberals don't think about anything except to bring the hostages. But they don't think about tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to happen again. And Hamas will take hostages tomorrow again. So, the Israeli lost 200 soldiers in this war. I think the total is 200, maybe 30, until now. Which means way more than the hostages. So if now we negotiate for exchange ceasefire for the hostages, yes, you killed tens of thousands of Hamas, yes, destroyed their bases, but terrible will be built. And those, uh, you know, those people, they don't care for how many people you kill. A human being have no value. You see, when you say, uh, you lost 40,000 for somebody. That's a big number, a huge number. But those people, they don't value their children. You will see a woman, she is, uh, you know, dancing in the street because Allahu Akbar, her son, he died for the sake of Allah. She go to the bedroom, she have sex, she make a new baby. So, the lack of understanding is very obvious. Like most of Western people, like, you know, if you go and check those uh, videos on YouTube, you will die laughing at the stupid Western, stupid American, stupid European. It doesn't matter. I mean, stupidity is amazing. The Muslims are using them heavily. Look at them. They are blonde, you know, uh, or African. or They have nothing to do with, with uh, neither Palestine or Israel. But they were able to mislead them and lead them 
and make them believe that now they have, I mean, homosexual gays, look at those. Uh, I saw a video of the leader, ambassador of Palestine for the, the activist. She is, uh, she is exposing her breast. So those people are really naive and stupid and they think they are fighting from, for themselves. They think they are fighting for the right thing. They are fighting for women, children. They are fighting for civilians. They are fighting against aggression, occupation. But reality is the opposite. You know, the Israeli, they have a very bad problem. The Israeli media, like for a long time, people, they say the Jews control the media. How many times you heard that? The Jews control the media. It's obviously the Jews don't control the media. Because everything you see around you is against the Jews. And the Jews are not good in media. As an example, uh, the Israeli government, they play a video of those rapists. They invited, let us say, a famous journalist, ambassador. Why you don't post this video online so everybody can see what Hamas did exactly? They say, well, the family of those victims, they don't want people to see it. Well, this is very stupid. You can mask the face. People need to see if you want to change the opinion, if you want to, you know, war have two sides. Side in the, in the field and side of the propaganda. And the Muslim propaganda is, is way more stronger than the Jewish propaganda. In fact, the Jews didn't have even propaganda, no more. They became so submissive. Uh, they didn't know what to do. Nobody want to listen to them anymore because they just make a speech about what Hamas did. One video is better than a million words. They post no videos, even though they have them. They post no images, no pictures, even though they have them. They post nothing. In fact, all the videos we have about the crimes of Hamas is what Hamas posted. The stupid Israeli government and until now they have no connection with reality that they should support what they say with evidence. So those Hamas, like today I heard Hamas is blessing the, the, pu the new future leaders of America. They think that those kids, they will be the future leaders of America. I say this is absolutely not because those kids, even those who they support you now, when they grow in age, mostly, most of them, they will understand that they were stupid and they were naive and they've been misleaded and they've been lied to. Uh, in the, like, Columbia University. Columbia University, the president of uh, Columbia University is a Muslim. Uh, so what you expect? They hijacked the university. The president is a Muslim. I think originally she is from India. And the, the Muslim in the university are small in number. They are not big. But the stupid American, who they are liberals, they are very easy to mislead. They are very easy to, easy to redirect. So in the ground, as you see, Muslim women speaking about in, the, in, in front of you, speaking about uh, the crimes of Israel, you know, how... Uh, uh, Berkeley as Berkeley became the nest of terrorism. You know, Berkeley never never put your kids in those schools. Your kid will go inside, he is a smart, he will come back out as an idiot. He will have a degree, yes, but he will be a stupid in history, stupid in social life, stupid everything. I remember once I spoke to someone who grew up uh you know uh, in, in in California and uh, she said to me uh, do you believe in the Bible is speaking about unicorn? Uh, I said, you have a degree from where? She said, uh, Berkeley. I said, you are, what is your degree? She said, a doctor. I said, if you search in two seconds in Google, you will find that unicorn is a real animal. And you are stupid. So those people, they think unicorn is a cartoon, the cartoon they see, you know, on TV. So, they graduated from Berkeley, but they do not know that there is really a real animal. It's called unicorn. In Arabic, we call him Wahid al-Qar. 
So education have nothing to do with degree and the name of a school doesn't make you smart. Those are rich, spoiled kids. They have nothing in life. They never struggle in their life. They got their school paid uh, and they want to get busy. Here we go, let's make uh, tents and uh, it's like fun. You know, it's like, you know, we found something to be uh, busy with. And because the media keep talking about them, they gave them too much attention and that make them go more, you know, active. They like it. Oh, it's working, you know. Look, so they, they are talking about us. So the more the media, and I'm talking about the media like Fox News, TV stations, not like in YouTube. So the stupid medias, they really push it more and they make, it, make them sound important. For me, those people are not important at all. The, what is important is, is what the Israeli army will do in the ground. Who care who make a tent in the street? Who care who shout? You can take off your pant, you can take off your panty, you can get naked, you can go sleep in the street if you want, do whatever you want. Israel will do what Israel needs to do. Uh, Hezbollah, and this is our topic today, understand very well how America function. And when I say Hezbollah, I mean Iran. But by the way, in case you do not know what Hezbollah, Hezbollah is a is a is a two words, word Hezb and Allah. You know Allah. Uh, Hezb mean party. So imagine. The wicked god of Islam, he have a party. And this party is an armed party. Not a political only. Some they might say, where is the name is, is coming from, you know? You will see the Quran saying that there is two parties. Hezbollah Shaitan, chapter 58, verse number 19. And Hezbollah, chapter 5, verse number 56. And chapter 58 22 and this is you will see the this is what uh, uh, Hezbollah and Iran and uh, all the terrorists they use and who is ever take Allah his mess and his messenger and those who have believe as a protectors uh, then the party of Allah will be victorious so you will see in this you know like in every uh, a speech for uh, the, the terrorist Nasrallah from Lebanon, uh, you will see the sentence behind him. Hezbollah humul ghalibun. The party of Allah, they are the victorious. As you see in the screen. So, how the party of Allah is going to be victorious? Simply by keeping yourself armed, be a terrorist and attack the non-believers. In the other hand, the non-believers are stupid. The non-believers, they think this is about land. They think that this war is about, uh, we are fighting over a piece of land. But obviously, they are a bunch of donkeys. Before October 7, the massive number of the hostages and those who get killed, they are the peace activists in Israel. In fact, that festival you saw in October 7 is a festival of peace. And those Israeli, they were always attacked their own against their government. They side with the people of Gaza and the terrorists. Can you believe it? They are the same as the stupid hippies in New York, Chicago, California, etc. So imagine <clears throat> you are a Jew and you think that the terrorists are right. <laughs> Why? Because the Israeli, they have zero, zero strong media. Horrible media. And the liberals are taking over everything. And the liberals, wherever they go, they teach, will let us sign agreement with them 
and when we sign peace agreement give them land they leave us alone we will leave them alone and that's it but we know that this is stupid and this is not about the land even though this land is not there those others are Arab the Arab are not from Gaza Gaza never belonged to the Arab neither so-called Palestine the Arab first time they came during the time of Omar al-Khattab the Caliphate you can check it out and right now in Google in case you are donkey and ignorant about history and you will find that the Arab first time nobody speak Arabic in this territory nobody ever ever nobody you will remember when you read the Bible you will see Jesus he spoke to a woman she is an Aramaic she is not an Arab so what the language is either they speak Hebrew or they speak Aramaic there is no Arabic nobody speak Arabic nobody people of Syria speak Aramaic people of Iraq speak Aramaic nobody speak Arabic when the Muslims invade they force as usual they hijack the land they hijack the name so the the Muslims came all the way from Saudi Arabia they hijack Egypt now what is the name of Egypt the Repub the Arab Republic of Egypt suddenly it's Arab now you see those hypocrites who speak about occupation and col uh, and colony they forgot that all the Arab countries are colony and they are occupation Syria is the land of the Syriac the Syrian are not Arab and their language is not Arabic they force them to speak Arabic what the name of Syria now the Arab Republic of Syria <laughs> they went all the way to Morocco they forced people of Morocco to speak Arabic Moroccan are not Arab those are African and they are most of them like Algeria Morocco Tunisia barbarian Amazigh all kind of tribes they have their own language, their own ethnic, their own culture. They have nothing to do with the Arab. Now, if you ask any one of them, the Muslims, they will say we are Arab. So the first thing the Muslims did is brainwash. And they are successful to brainwash inside Israel and abroad. And there is a reason for this. Number one is us as a Christians. If you go right now to your church and if you ask your priest what he think about so-called conflict uh, somebody saying Jesus disciple spoke Arabic uh, okay yeah here we go if we have a smart person here Jesus disciple they spoke Arabic in that day uh -huh, okay okay thank you for telling me are an idiot none of the disciple of Jesus went to any Arab land just to let you know you're you are an idiot and uh, we know that uh, uh, Mark he went to Egypt we know that disciple went to India we know that disciple went to Greece to Syria but I don't know any disciple went to any Arab country because the Arabian they were in the desert far far from everything but anyway you know people they have their own education so the Muslims because Islam propaganda is based on religion and belief and hatred if you go and check all those who support Palestine if you ask them which one you support Palestine Hezbollah or Palestine Jihad Islami or Palestine Hamas you will find that there is major major Islamic parties inside so-called Palestine they want to kill each other if you remember many years ago <clears throat> I made a video in YouTube and it became like number one top of view in one day why it became number one or top of you because YouTube thought the title was kind of uh, you know awkward I called my video the beauty of Hamas and the ugliness of Israel and because my title is the beauty of Hamas YouTube pushed my videos to the front and everybody click the beauty of Hamas the ugliness of Israel so I have I don't know like 500,000 in one night 
And then YouTube banned my account totally. Totally, totally. At that time, it was called Investigate Islam. They banned the channel. And they said, for deceiving information. Deceiving what? Information. In that videos, I made two videos. I showed how Hamas killing Palestinian who they are supporters of the terrorists Yasser Arafat. They throw them from the roof. They shoot them in the head. I mean, all kinds of crimes. They beat people on the street. They make the Palestinian go naked. You see now what they show you? They show you the Israeli making Hamas naked. Only with their panties. Hamas, they throw Palestinians from the roof. Not long, not long time ago, Hamas, they attack another Muslim group. I'm trying to remember the name. They are terrorists too. But you know, they are competing on territory. Who is going to control? So, you know, as usual, in the gangs, uh, you know, uh, in the gang nature, one have to finish the other one, as the Quran said. Uh... I think it's called Jund uh, Ansarullah. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find you the video so you can you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Give me a second. Just to show you, this is, you know, to show you the, what, what the reality is and how stupid the media. The media, they, you know, they show you that this is just Hamas and Israel and their occupation and, you know, this is nothing to do with what you are saying. Those are gang terrorists and they are fighting over money and they use religion uh, As, as a reason, you know, to kill and to make money, to control. Let us see. Yeah, I'm trying to find the, the videos. I found here something. This is 14 years ago. But this is like, uh, uh, this is BBC Arabic. So this is 14 years ago video of how Hamas killed every single, and they killed the leader of uh, the the so-called Ansarullah or the Salafi Mujahideen. So this is from the BBC and this is 14 years ago. Those are the Mujahideen. Hamas, they killed all of them. Every single one of them. They finished them all. And this is their leader. So those are the ones who was going to control Gaza. Hamas, they have no choice now. Who is going to take over the business? Both are Islamist. Both are terrorists, as you see. Both they believe in slaughtering any Christian, any Jew. Both they sell drugs. Both they like raving. They are the same. Do different leadership 
It doesn't work this way. One of them have to finish the other one. And this is exactly like there's videos. If I, I look for them, I'm sure YouTube will take my video down and even will take my channel. But I'm sure you can find them. Uh, so anyway, uh, Hamas, they have history of killing Palestinian more than anyone in the history of killing Palestinians. And Palestinian always killed Palestinians. So I go right, right and search for how Hamas killed the followers of uh, Yasser Arafat. You know, you will find tons of videos. I don't know if they delete them, but I'm sure you will find. So the story is very easy to understand. No problem, no problem. But there, no, there's no Arabic, no problem. Coming from everywhere, my friend. There's a guy there, he is convinced that the disciple, he, they spoke Arabic, no problem. My friend. I mean, is that important? I mean, why people are so silly and so stupid? Is it really this is our topic? I mean, do you see how silly some people, we are talking about this land, nobody speak Arabic in it. We are not talking about a miracle. Silly, naive, teenage, a, a, a brain of a mosquito. Is that really our topic now that the disciple of Jesus, they spoke all languages? Are you happy now? Yeah, they speak Chinese too. Ching Ho Hei. Mental. Look what we are talking about and look what they are talking about. We are talking about killing and raping and destroying and occupying and they are worried about Jesus. He spoke, the disciple, they spoke all languages. Solve the problem now. So as you see, those terrorists didn't really care who is going, who, whoever want to stop in, in their way, he must go. He must die. He must die. Either side, not only him, them, like the other ones, the one I showed you here, they are the same too. Anyone who stop in their way, he must die. It's not only this is about, this is how Islam is. Islam is a very filthy, very filthy scumbag. Terrorist, look at this, look. I mean, people are in the mosque, what those people are doing? Why you need to be carrying uh, guns? You know, we Christians are very well armed in the USA. We can go to the church holding, clashing, cough, and him. I mean, what is this about? Why in the mosque? Why, why they have this? Because they are criminals. It's a gang. This is not a religion. Like if the Muslims are people under attack, somebody will come and shoot them. I will say, okay, you know what? They are protecting themselves. The Hindu attacking them maybe. But there's nobody there except them. Even Jews, there is no Jews there. Israel, they withdraw from that territory. More than 20 years ago. So why are holding guns and clashing coves and wearing masks and you know, what, what, what for? Because simply, it's about intimidation. They want to show themselves that they are, uh, uh, you know, the superior, and anyone want to open his mouth, anyone disagree with us. Those weapons, in my opinion, is to make everyone who is inside the mosque a potato. Either you are with us, or we will slaughter you. Hamas, they were smarter. Why? Because Hamas, they are born of the Muslim Brotherhood. In fact, they are the army part or the army brigade of the Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood is not only Hamas. It's Turkey, Erdogan, it's Qatar. And they have a big numbers in, in Syria, big numbers in Jordan, even big numbers in Indonesia, big numbers in Bangladesh. So they have a big, big supporters. Those group, they are just born. They just created a new organization. So they are not really connected with any country. They don't have a sponsor yet. They don't have they don't have the money, let us say. 
And this way, Hamas, they were able to kill them all and slaughter them all. Hamas, in the same time, they were able to kill all the, uh, uh, the, the soldiers of uh, uh, Yasser Arafat. Yasser Arafat, he is not an Islamist person. Like he used Quran to speak, you know, but he is not, his organization is not Islamist, even though he's a terrorist. And that was his weakness. Hamas is Islamist and they can use the motive, which is the Quran, to recruit money supporters and fighters this is why hamas was able to kick out yasser arafat from uh, from gaza but they could not kick him out from the other places why because the islamists in that areas and the other areas are small in number so if you look around you all those videos you see in the screen, like this guy here, he present Ansar Allah in Yemen. Ansar Allah in Yemen, they are just the same as Hezbollah. They are Hezbollah. But they are in Yemen. They are the armed forces of Iran in Yemen, even though they are Yemeni, but they are Shia. So their motive, their motive, those the Hezbollah, is different from the motive of Hamas. Hamas, they have different motive. Hamas mostly is a local organization. They want to control, get rich, and make a government, and use religion and hatred to to keep themselves in, in, in control. They have, let's say, a local agenda. Hezbollah, they have international agenda. In fact, Hezbollah right now, they have camps in Venezuela. Venezuela. They have camps of training in Venezuela. They have camps of training in Nigeria. They have camps and training in West Africa. They have everywhere, they have camps of Hezbollah. So Iran is trying to do what the Soviet Union was doing long time ago before it collapsed trying to spread Shiaism in Islamic countries and using religion to create an armed group and those armed group will subdue the one who is not armed and the one is not armed they don't have money they don't have support nobody care for them so for sure the one who is they are armed they will be able to subdue the one who is not armed. That is very normal to happen. Like now, let us say if you live in a street and there is one family, they are all armed and they are gang. And the rest of the street, let us say there's a thousand family, but all of them, they are peaceful. They don't even have a kitchen knife. Who is going to control the street? We know the answer. Even if the family who they are armed there are maybe just only 10 criminals, just 10. And even though maybe in the street there's 10,000 people, they live in it. But because a human being always choose safety over danger. Like why I want to put myself in danger? Let somebody else deal with them. If you watch all the old days movies, you will find like in the cowboy movies, something about reality that a bunch of gangs, they come to a town, they scare the everybody, they intimidate everybody. And even though the towns have maybe 600, 700 men, and maybe the gang is not even five, sell the five, they were able to subdue the whole town. Why? Because nobody is brave to stand for them. And everybody is selfish. So, the Muslims, they understand the reality that Western, they are selfish. Which means everyone say, me. None of my business. 
let someone else deal with it. They understand that the Israeli, they are selfish too, especially in those who they are liberals. <clears throat> the liberals, you know, they don't really have any motive beside living and let live. Just living and let live. They don't care for religion, they don't care for history, they don't care really even for their land. Hippies, you know, they are hippies. We saw the festival in uh, next to Gaza and how Hamas attack this festival. All those people are peace activists and that festival was in fact named peace, peace something, you know, you can, you can, uh, you can search the name. So the Muslim, they understand the reality of the enemy, that the enemy is a stupid, the enemy is naive, the enemy is a donkey. The enemy have no idea what's going to happen to him. The enemy, he think that if you give me more, I will let you live. This is how the stupid the enemy is. But those people, they don't care how much you give them. They care to take it all, including you. It's not about you giving me. It's not about you being friendly and nice to me, so I will say thank you. There's no place for two. There's only me. So, until now, the stupid Israeli, and by the way, there's a guy, he made a comment <clears throat> uh, a few days ago, I don't know if you saw his comment, he said the Christian prince, he just cursed the people of God. Uh, I don't know, some people are really stupid donkeys too. People of God, and you do a festival for gays and homosexual. I mean, how you would God there? I mean, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm, like now, I'm talking about hippies. You know, I mean, people, of this, so the guy, people of God. Oh, okay, those are people of God. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of people, they are stupid. They don't know what people of God mean. God is going to be with you when you are with God, and God will let you alone when you are not. So, there's really, actually, they are struggling because there's a big part of them, they are away from God. They become hippie, yoga people, you know, like, uh, uh, very awkward, you know, very awkward. Liberals, wherever they go, they mess it up. I mean, I do not need to tell you what's happening in New York and Chicago and France, San Francisco and California. You do not need me to tell you. Go right now, type like San Francisco downtown. Shut down. The whole city shut down. Los Angeles downtown. Shut down. Philadelphia. Zombie town. New York. You see, all those liberals who they are striking pro-Palestinians, they are asking for a ceasefire in Gaza, but nobody is asking for a ceasefire in Chicago. <laughs> you have more shooting in Chicago more than, more than Gaza. So those stupid donkeys liberals i cannot even i mean them donkeys is an insult to donkeys they don't fit even to call them donkeys they are asking for ceasefire in a country they have nothing to do with it and ignoring who is the one who started the fire but they are not asking for ceasefire in their own town people you know i mean the, 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 those those cities are the cities i mean look how ethical they are ethical they are the cities of shoplifting. You know what shoplifting? You know, as you know, English is not my first language. Uh, so I don't know, like, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, like, I think what was my neighbor was telling me, uh, they, today they, they arrested somebody for shoplifting. And you know, for me, I didn't understand like shoplifting. I said, "What is lifting in the shop?" You know, because lifting have, in my understanding, have nothing to do with theft. You know, I said, "Really, what he did?" He said, "Shoplifting." I said, "Is that a crime?" Huh? <laughs> but anyway, that's what happened to you when you know you are learning language, trying to understand what what what, what people are talking about. So I I thought he left something to the shelf, or you know. I don't know, like, what is why why they arrested him. So they are worried 
they bring you a Muslim woman, they put her in the front of the camera, and she is telling you about how the people of Gaza, they are suffering. Well, for 20 years, the Israeli did not enter there for a second. You will see, uh, what his name, this guy, Douglas, he interviewed with a, an, an idiot woman. She said, yes, uh, Gaza is occupied. He said to her, since when? <laughs> they would draw a long time ago. Even they offer, actually, in the, the, the Israeli offer Gaza to be given to Egypt. Egyptian, they refuse. Nobody want to take them. They say they are surrounded. No, they are not. They have borders with Egypt, <laughs> you know. And the Egyptians are the one who's closing the border because they are criminals and terrorists. But anyway, going back to our topic, if you look at those faces, you will see how stupid. And this is NBC. You know, NBC is one of the most filthy TV stations in America. In fact, they make cartoon about burning the Quran. And they are accusing the one who burned the Quran, they are people of hatred. <laughs> Not the one who want to kill them. <laughs> and you know, uh, those those stupid liberals uh, and Muslims, they, uh, they contacted Amazon to ban my books. Now, they are asking for ban the ban law of books. Why? Because they want to put shelves, but they put in the shelves uh, books for kids about gays. So look how hypocrite they are. They force Amazon to take my books from the shelves, and I force Amazon to put them back by law. And my books are back. Because you're going to take it out for what? But those cowards, they support banning my books. But they are against banning their books. And the books banned for their books is not really a ban. It's just a book not made for a kid. If somebody in the age to read any book, he can read it. The same as there is a movie for a kid and there is a movie for, is not for a kid. So it's not even a banning. They are hypocrite and they are cowards. If you remember... <clears throat> There was a group of, uh, we played their video a few days ago, last week maybe. Uh, they are anti activists against war. Activists against war in Chicago. They heard in the news that Iran is attacking Israel. They start saying, hey, I mean, they are, they are activists against war and war just started. And they are supporting war now. So, Iran... Hezbollah, Hamas, Muslims, they understand the situation very, very well. The West is full of foolish people. And there is certain territory in the West, is, there is nothing but foolishness. I mean, maybe from every hundred citizens, you will find ten are not stupid. And they knew what's going on. So they understand that the war is going to be driven in the way they want because they knew that homosexual in their side, which is irony. I mean, if you go to Gaza, they kill homosexual. But how in the world homosexual support people of Gaza? People of Gaza kill homosexual, not Hamas only. Hey, uh, liberals, if there is any one of you can show me one video of homosexual from Gaza, like somebody is a homosexual, he made a video from Gaza, if there is no video, never happened, can you tell me why? <laughs> Look at this Jew. This is a Jew, and he have the flag of Israel. Those are the weirdo, stupid, who graduated from, you know, New York University, or mental. And they support the enemy who want to slaughter the Jews. If this guy, he go to Gaza, what would happen to him? Do you see him in the short video? If this guy, he go to Gaza, what will happen to him? You know what will happen. So understanding the situation, those people, they take advantage. And you will notice, like the first question, why no pro-Palestinian 
Marsh in Dubai. Why no pro-Palestinian marsh in Saudi Arabia? Anyone tell me? How come they marsh in USA, but they don't marsh in Saudi Arabia? What happened? Anyone can solve the problem? I mean, what is the secret? Why they don't? No, no, no. It's not about they don't care about them. They hate them. The Saudi, they hate the Palestinian. They forbid them from taking visa. And there is a reason for that. You know, the Saudi, they did a great, great help to the Palestinians. If we can call them Palestinian, but, you know, for the sake of, uh, you know, the territory, we call them Palestinian. For years and years, the Saudi, they gave them open visa. You know what open visa mean? Like, if you are a, a, a Filipino or... Uh, Indonesian etc they give you a visa like uh, two years to work maximum then you have to renew the Saudi they used to give Palestinian visas open open it never expired they are like citizen and they give them the best of the jobs teachers in the in library and you know great jobs great salary so they give them a lot of money they spend a lot of money on them and then when Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait, and Kuwaiti, they did the same. The Kuwaiti, almost 55% of the jobs, administration jobs, was given to Palestinians. Imagine, 55%. When Saddam Hussein occupied Kuwait, all the Palestinians in the world, they were praising Saddam Hussein, and they were asking him to attack Saudi Arabia. So since then, the Saudi, they understood what kind of people they are. Same as Emirat. And they start killing them, kicking them out, sorry, from Saudi Arabia, from Emirat, from Bahrain, by waves, to the point, in a certain point, there is zero Palestinian live in Kuwait. Nobody is allowed. They were living like kings. Big villas, nice cars, the best salary you can imagine. In one day, they betray the one who was to treat them with kindness. Unlimited kindness. This is why the Saudi. Do you remember the, the, the video of the Saudi guy who was making fun of uh, Palestinians? Anyone remember the video? Even my stomach remember it. Anyone remember? There's a guy. He's a Saudi. He was uh, he was uh, speaking about Palestinian. He told him, "Who are you? You are not even Palestinian. You are just a mix of many ethnic." Right? Do you remember the Saudi guy? So Egyptian don't want them. They close the borders on them. Saudi they don't. They hate them. Emirat. Ah, don't even mention it. Uh, by the way, Emirat, they send, until now, they send food. But because it's just like, you know, in the front of the Muslims, you see, we are doing our best. We are helping them. We are giving them food. We give them tents, but they understand very well that those are their enemies. They side with Qatar against Emirat. They side with Qatar against Saudi Arabia. They side with Qatar. When they see that those, those Palestinians, when they see a Saudi in the street, they spit at him. I can show you tons of videos. They chase them in the street, they spit at them, and they call the Saudi all kind of uh, uh, the F-words. So Saudis, they don't care, and they don't want to get a close to so-called Gaza or Palestine. Saudi, they are desperate to sign an agreement with Israel, but not because they are nice Muslims, but because they are afraid of what's going to happen soon with Iran. If you look at the news, <clears throat> everybody is speaking about Iran building a massive army and trying their best to steal technology, missiles, nuclear weapons, 
drones, everything you can imagine. The Iranian, they can say whatever they want in TV against Israel. But the real target is the Muslim countries in the Middle East. So it might appear, it might appear, for those who do not know much about the area, that this is about Israel and Iran. Iran is using Israel as something to unite the effort to spread Shiaism between Muslims. So the excuse now for Iran to be supported by someone is Sunni is look, Iran is the only one is supporting the people of Gaza. Oh, the Shia is the only one standing for the people of Gaza. Saudi Arabia, they wash their hands. Oman, they don't care. Egypt, don't care. Jordan, don't care. Erdogan, he just big mouth. Who is the one doing something to support people of Gaza? The terrorist. It's Iran. So Iran is playing the game, and the game is for the long run is not against Israel. Even though they wish to, to finish every, every Jew, but they have a long way to go on to, to, to reach that point. Iran have to take over Iraq, and they did already. They have to take over Syria, and they did already. So now Iran, the border of Iran, is not Iran no more. See how the plan working? Iran now is Iran plus Iraq plus Syria. That is not enough. Because remember, the target is not Israel for now, really. Even though they keep talking about Israel and they launch an attack against Israel. But this is just to help them to have a strong ground in Islamic Sunni countries so they can do Shiaism, converting Muslim Sunni into Shia. So they were able to convert a big number of Muslim Sunni into Shia and Yemen. And those are the one we call them Al Houthi. The one who shoot drones and missiles. The drones is made in Iran, the missiles made in Iran. All the way at Israel. But if you remember, Al Houthi was shooting drones at Jeddah. Here. He shot drones at Jizan which in the border of Yemen. This is Jizan. They shot the drones at Dahran, where a lot of oil is located. They shot the drones and missiles at Khamisum Shail, this area here. So Yemen Shia, already they are at war with the Yemen Sunni and the Saudi and Emirat and Bahrain. The Yemen is just an extend territory of Iran. So look what Iran is trying to do. The borders of Saudi Arabia surrounded right now by Shia countries. Yemen here, Iraq, and this is Iran controlling the Gulf and the Arab, they call it the, the Arabian Gulf. The Persian, they call it the Persian Gulf. So the Persian, who they are the Shia, they want to take over all this territory. And they want to then, after they take Emirat and Bahrain, and, and Qatar is going to be taken no way. There's, there's no, it's, it, this is the easiest, even if the American is there. So the, 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 all what they need to do is to convert people into Shiaism without attack, without war. And then those Shia, they will start supporting Iran. The same as what happened in Iraq. Like right now, the, the Iranian, they don't have Iranian forces in Iraq. They have Shia, Iraqi, who they are willing to die for the sake of the mullahs of Iran. So you see, using religion to occupy the country is the easiest way. 
This way, you make the people fight for you, the one you occupy, the one you control. If we go right now, just to show you what Iran was able to establish. And all of this, by the way, by the help of the American. All the power Iran has now is because of America. And if you don't believe me, I feel sorry for you. It sounds awkward, right? I mean, America, what are you talking about? The American, they took Saddam Hussein. And by taking Saddam Hussein, the Shia took over the country. And when the Shia took over the country, the Shia, they will obey the Mullahs. And when the Mullahs of Iraq, they are subdued to the Mullahs of Iran because they believe they are hires in rank, then Iraq become under the control of Iran. And all of this because of the smart American. Let me see if I can show you some So now the, the Iraqi, they have a militant and it's Shia. All of them, they are Iraqi. All of them, they speak Arabic. None of them is Iranian. But they hate who? America and Israel. I don't know if the picture is clear for you. Those are the militant Iraqi Shia in Iraq. So Iran, by the help of the stupid American, was able to control over Iraq and then redirect the Shia Iraqi to be their arm to fight the enemy of Iran, whoever he is, America, Israel, it doesn't matter, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, it doesn't matter. In fact, if you look at the weapon, those... Uh, they call them al hashd al-Shabi. If you look at their weapon, you will find that 90% of it, if not more, is American weapon. And you will not believe even what they own. They, in fact, they are well armed more than the Iraqi army itself. Let me show you. This is the website of Hezbollah. You know, the funny thing is, <clears throat> Hezbollah is a terrorist organization, right? Okay. If somebody reports your videos or your even website for something unlawful, the USA government, they can shut it down immediately. Is that correct? So how in the world Hezbollah website function? Almanar.com, as you see. Do you see it? Those are the weapon of al hashd al-Shabi. Those are militant. This is not an army in Iraq. Imagine what the American did. Look what they have. Look at the weapon they have. So those are the Shia of Iran, but they are Iraqi in Iraq. The American, because they are so smart and they can see to long distance, you know, very genius. They come to the configuration of, let us take Saddam Hussein and bring Iran to take over. <laughs> you know, the stupid American, and sadly, I have to say stupid American, but I can say it doesn't matter if they are Republican or, or, uh, or, or a Democrat. 
Uh, in fact, the inv invasion of Iraq uh, happened during uh, George Bush, right? So they are dreamers, you know. They say to themselves, okay, we replace Saddam Hussein. We establish a democracy government. And then we will do the same as we did in Germany. They think the Iraq, the Iraqi are German. <laughs> uh, what do you can say? I mean, the stupidity is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So the stupid American, they did give uh, the Iranian the key, the golden key of many countries. Same stupid mistake they did in Syria. In Syria, if we go to the map, the snake of Qatar convinced the stupid European and the stupid American by bribe, by convincing, I don't care, mostly money, that if we replace the regime of Syria, which is kind of socialist and it's not religious. In fact, women, they were forbidden to wear hijab. Most are watched by the secret service. People with beard, they get arrested. They are anti-Islam very much. This is how the country was. The American did not like that. The American decided to fix the country. How they will fix the country? They said, let us support terrorists and cause a civil war. But the real reason of the civil war, the filthy Qatar, they convinced Europe with Erdogan, through Erdogan, that if you want to be independent from Moscow gas, well, we can run a pipe from Qatar all the way through Iraq all the way through Syria, all the way through Turkey, all the way through Europe. Bingo. You will not need the Russian gas no more. The European, they like the idea, but the Assad, he reject the idea. So now we have no choice except to take him off the government. And now this Assad, he found himself, he have no friends. And Iran, they jump again, the stupid American, they give the golden key to Iran. The Iranian Shia support the Syrian government who they are Alawi. Alawi is a kind of a Shia. They are not exactly Shia, but they are closed, more close to the Shia. Alawi doesn't even care for religion, actually. Their girls, they, their skirt is not even one inch. They drink vodka more than water. They make fun of the prayers in the mosque. They don't go to the mosque. But look, by the help of the American, and I don't want to forget the Israeli because Netanyahu support that too, they decide to remove the social anti-Islamic government from Syria. Now the Assad, he have no choice, no friends, nobody. Europe, we caught him, sanctions, even medicine cannot come to the country. Nobody can buy their oil. Uh, their airport is shut down. No, uh, you know, no a part exchange for machines or anything. I mean, they, they put all kinds of sanctions. Okay. Now this guy, he have no choice. And then Trump, he came. Trump is a smarter, supposedly. And he put more sanctions on Syria. He suffocates Syria, actually. So those guys in Syria, they surrender to Iran totally. Because they have no friends. Nobody. Nothing, nothing. Everybody in the neighborhood is their enemy. There is only one country next to them is not an enemy. The Shia Iraq, which is Iran. So now Iran invades Syria by the welcoming of the Syrian government. So now by the help of the stupid American again, Iran is Iraq, Iran is Syria. And now Iran is focusing on Jordan. I don't know if you hear the last threat of Iran to Jordan. And this threat is very serious. The Jordanian government is very weak. 
it's not this this is not even a country the king of Jordan can't even pay for the police it's bankrupt they don't even have water it's run the whole country run by a you know very idiot stupid king who is not even a king I mean this is thanks to the British intelligence they made his family kings and princes this guy he's a Bedouin his grandfather he used to take a shower once a year the British intelligence they decide to kick the old men from the land so they brought somebody claim that he is descended from Muhammad they made him a hero they supported him they gave him money they brought him to uh, to to Damascus they made the three kingdoms Iraq Syria and Jordan the one who was king of Iraq was killed the one who was king of Syria was was killed the one who was a king of Jordan is not king killed yet but he will maybe because there is many reasons he is weak he cannot afford security and he have a lot of enemies inside and outside so Iran now is making a threat to Jordan for this is the step to surround Saudi Arabia not Israel Israel is a later target trust me the Iranian they use Israel it just as a promotion like they cannot make a, they cannot they cannot speak say we hate Saudi Arabia that will not be for their benefit they cannot say we want to kill the Arab that will be horrible to say but they can say they hate the Jews and that will make a lot of Muslims support them, even Muslims who they are not Shia. That will make even the communists, the socialists, the liberals, the Democrats in the USA support them. Imagine. Because hating Jews and hating Israel unite all those evil in the West, in the East, together. So Iran knew very well where is the weakness? The king of Jordan, when Iran attacked lately, what was the day? Anyone remember the date when Iran launched their uh, their missiles against Israel? What was the date? Anyway, you guys, you can find it out. Jordan, they allowed the Israeli and the American to use their airspace April 13. Okay, thank you. So they allow the, the Israeli and the American to use their airspace to shut down the missiles and the drones coming from Iran. Now the Jordanian they claim that they are the one who shut it down, but we know that they don't have the capability of doing so. They don't. So when they say Jordanian shut it down, I, I love. We know who did. So, but he allowed the, the 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 American and the Israeli to use his airspace to shut down any drone any missiles coming to Israel which mean he decided to take the side of Israel literally and that will make him more weak in the front of his people how he can explain this how the king of Jordan he can explain how in the world you stop drones and missiles going to Israel if he say well they are violating our airspace they will say so what so Iran now they are going to use this against this guy to take him down and I am sure they will start arming and generating groups of terrorists inside Jordan to start killing shooting police shooting whoever support the government official they will start practicing or let us say create another Hamas inside Jordan and in case you do not know, Jordan almost, I don't know the real percentage of how many Palestinians, but I am assuming no less than 80 something percent, maybe 90. So the country is a Palestinian country. The king is not Palestinian. Jordanian are minority. Those who you call them Jordanian or they are considered Jordanians, they are minority and Iran understand that very well soon very soon I'm, I'm sure they already they are doing that they will start arming Hamas inside Jordan so they can fight the king remember 
the king of Jordan, he killed tens of thousands of Palestinians before. Now the numbers in Gogol are very funny, but who cares about Gogol? Uh, if you search in Google for the Black September, anyone heard of it? Anyone heard of a Black September? If you type Black September in Google, let me see if I can show you something. Anyway, in the Black September, the King of Jordan, he found himself, he had no choice but to kill as many as he could from the armed Palestinians, for they were planning to take over his country. Those are the Palestinians. They created an army inside Jordan. The King of Jordan... What he will do? Either we kill them or they kill us. They have army, they have tanks, they have, I mean, they have, they, actually they are armed. Uh, Yasser Arafat, imagine, he have his own airplane. He don't even need, he don't go through the police. He, you know, they are like, they are, they are, they are, they control the country. They, they control Lebanon too. This is why Israel have to invade Lebanon. Imagine Yasser Arafat, he go, uh, uh, Fidel Castro, the, the scumbag Fidel Castro, he come to visit Yasser Arafat in Lebanon. And the Lebanese government even don't know who is in the airport. Imagine, who care about the Lebanese president? So the Palestinians, they, they call themselves Palestinians, they started a new waterfront in Jordan. They decide to kill the king, to kill all the Jordanians. And when I say kill, I mean anyone who opposed them, you know, anyone opposed them taking over the country, he will be dead. And they are very well armed and they have tanks. They have all the animation they have because they were receiving donations from all the Arab around the world. All the Muslims were donating to them. All those people, they want to fight for the sake of Allah. They want to fight the Jews. They want to fight who? The Jews. But in reality, they created states inside Lebanon, inside Syria, inside Jordan. And they want to take over all those territories. So the king of Jordan, this is the scumbag Yasser Arafat. And by the way, Yasser Arafat himself is not a, not a Palestinian. <laughs> Isn't it funny? The first president of so-called Palestine is not even Palestinian. Anyway, I hope you guys you are you are, you are enjoying this uh, history time. I'm just trying to give you some uh, like lighting on history so you can understand what's going on and uh, maybe some of you don't really uh, care for those things but in order to understand what's going on in the in the territory you better have a full scope of everything the background and the future you know if you don't study the back history you will not know the future future is written in the history like when you get married you have sex with your wife the future is known now you will have a baby <laughs> so so don't don't claim you do not know what happened you know what you did and this is exactly what we are talking about the babies of terrorism started from that areas they use the jews as a motive to get money to take over countries, not only Israel. They want to take over Jordan. They want to take over Syria. They want to take over Lebanon. They want to take over Kuwait. They want to take over everywhere. 
few years ago, the Saudi, they discovered that the Muslim Brotherhood, including Hamas, because Muslim Hamas, Muslim Brotherhood, they were preparing for a queue against Emirat and the King of Saudi Arabia. So they can flip the government and establish the caliphate of Hamas. So the, the plan is bigger than what people think. It's about Israel. This is bigger, way bigger than Israel itself. In the other hand, the Israelis are so naive. Until now, they don't understand what's going on. They think that those are Palestinian, because this is what they told them in TV. Those are Palestinian, they want their land, and we took their land from them, which is not true, because this is the land of the Jews. Not the land of those people, those are Arab. Arab are not Palestinians. So, this is what they've been, like, you know, the, the Israeli now, they have the same information. A lot of stupid kids, they learn about the crusade. If you go to any school in USA, any school in Europe, what they will say to you? The crusade, they were bad, the criminals, filthy, disgusting. And then many Christians, they say the crusade don't present us, which is false. In fact, the crusade are the best of us. In fact, if not the crusade, those Abdul, they took over, YouTube, over, over, over Europe a long time ago. It was the crusade who saved your ass. If not the crusade, we don't have a freedom of speech today. Because they will be taken all over the world. Remember, the Abdul, they took over Europe. It was the crusade who stopped them. So, history written falsely. The criminal became a victim. And the victim became a criminal. And this is what they are doing right now in Israel. So, those are criminals who came and invade the land with the Arab when they came to Jerusalem. And they hijack the land, they force people to speak Arabic, and now they claim that this is their land. When we knew that the Israeli are exist there thousands of years before those people even exist there, even before one person speak Arabic. But who knows when I read history? Nobody. And if you read history, you read it as you wish. And then those people they claim now that the Phoenician are Arab. Huh? Phoenician Arab? Yes, the Syrian Arab. What the heck? The Egyptian Arab? Really? The Australian Arab? I mean, they are even saying that the Queen of England, she is descended from Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> so history is very much fabricated. And look what the stupid American did. We have to go back again to the stupid American. I mean, America have the most stupid list of leaders in the world. Yasser Arafat was labeled as terrorist and his organization as terrorist everywhere in the world. The American, they decide to help him. So they brought him to the table and they said to him, listen, let us sign peace agreement with Israel. And you will become a president. And who is the one who was behind that? The scumbag Billy Clinton. Who is going to do that, you know? Who is going to do this, such a disaster, better than the the the, uh, the rapist Bill Clinton? So the stupid Bill Clinton, he invited this filthy terrorist, criminal, to the White House, and he invited the President of Israel. And they sign what so called peace agreement. I call it piece of shit. Because of this so called agreement, Israel today is struggling massively. Because of this peace agreement, so called peace agreement, now they become legally. 
considered as a state. They are not terrorist group no more, which means they can use banking, receive money, open organization. They are recognized even in the United Nations. They are recognized everywhere, any human right. They, I mean, uh, thank you, America. And this is why I say that Israeli, when they listen to American, they are just doomed. Each time the Israeli obeying the American, they are screwing their own country. Now, after all those years, after all those years, did the Israeli receive peace? No. Okay, you sign peace. You give them land. You give them government. You give them title. This guy now became a president. President! Not the head of terrorist group. Did you receive peace? Did they stop stabbing you in the street? Did they stop kidnapping your girls and your daughters and your teenage? Did they stop burning your houses? In the news, they will show you that the settlers, they are attacking Palestinians, burning their houses. But they will not tell you that in the same day, those terrorists, they kidnapped a teenage and they killed him. Teenage Jew. But in the news, will show you, do you see what the Jews are doing to the poor Palestinians? Who they are not Palestinians. So now going back to zero, Hezbollah, Iran, Israel. The war we see right now is not a war. There's no war. All of this is a joke. Because the Israeli, they don't have a leadership to go and cut the head of the snake. The head of the snake is not in Jordan, is not in Syria, is not in Iraq. The head of the snake is in two locations. Qatar, where all the money coming from Hamas, and all their leaders are there. Turkey cannot do anything without Qatar. Qatar is the money, is the basket of money, the gold, and Iran. Until now, what the Israelis are doing is just a waste of time. Because you cannot fight terrorism and you don't cut the source of income. Just to make it simple for you, I'm going to do shopping. And let us say I'm a terrorist. Now, a normal citizen, he go do shopping, maybe to Walmart to buy some grocery, tomato, potato. A terrorist will do different shopping. Guns, bombs, missiles, building tunnels underground. This is extremely costly. If you go to do a shooting practice, in less than five minutes, you spend $50. At least. Bullets are very expensive. As long as they have money coming to them, terrorism will never stop. <laughs> the Israeli are shooting at the wrong location. I'm not saying that they should not fight in Gaza, no. I'm saying fight the real enemy, the one who is the dynamo, the engine, if you break the engine, the car is broke. They are shooting at the stoplight. They are shooting at the windshield. They are shooting at the trunk. And they avoid the head of the snake. Even when the head of the snake decide to attack them in a massive attack. The last number I received, it was more than 500 drones and missiles shot at Israel. What the Israeli did? Nothing. Stupid, silly, not even to mention so-called attack. Israel chose shame in exchange for peace. They again listened to the American. The Iranian now, 
they notice that the Israeli, even though they are, they have a very powerful army, but they are not free. They have a lot of liberals inside the country, the same as the hippies we have in Chicago, and New York, and Berkeley, and Columbia University, all the scumbags. They have a lot of scumbags inside Israel. Who they are, they cry for any bullet. Oh, you no, know, we are in fear. You know, they think they can earn a country and security by crying. So Iran understand the game very well. Understand that Israel, they listen carefully to the American. American, they have a huge influence on Israel. Israel don't want to go for war alone. They are not willing to do so. They are not prepared for it. Therefore, Americans don't war with Iran because Biden is the right hand of Obama. In fact, Obama is the president. Obama is a Muslim Shia and he supports Iran, as always. So they knew for sure that Obama will never allow Israel to attack them. Now, here I have to mention that the Israeli they can do attack and they can fart at Obama and America. But as long as we have people who they are doing politics, politics says, well, listen to the American. We need the American. Therefore, they will and they will be always under the command of Obama until the White House have a new president. And that is possible to be maybe Trump. But until that change, God knows what will happen. We have for the election seven months, and then after that, maybe two months to have a new president, if we were able to have a new president. For sure, Iran, they don't want Trump to win the election. Because Trump was able really to suffocate Iran in economic way as soon Biden he came he left many sanctions on them because this is the command of Obama we told you before that the first thing Biden he did in the first five days of his presidency he left the Houthi from uh, the list of terrorism and obviously this was done for a very simple reason Obama he want to sponsor Iran and now he is back in the office. Iran is using the liberals and using everything they can to take Trump down. Trump is a disaster for them if he won the election. Trump is their fear. So now Iran, using Biden, Biden is used by Obama. Trump, they made him busy with cases every day. Soon they will put him in jail, most likely. But it's possible that Trump, he won the election, even he's inside the jail room. Because still he can go for election. Unless they try to make it like it's not lawful for him to be in the election. They try that. So the future, actually, of Israel and the war with Iran and the future of Saudi Arabia, and the future of Emirates, and the future of the regime of Iran is in the coming president of USA. If it is Biden, Iran will be more and more aggressive. Trust me, they will never dare to attack Israel if Trump was there. Not because of Trump he will go for war, no, but he will give no limit support for Israel. He will not go for war for them. I, you know, obviously, but he will give them the support they need. So Iran now, they are taking advantage of a situation. They have Syria, they have Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Saudi Arabia in fear, Emirates in fear, Jordan in fear, Israel have no peace, Biden is a stupid, perfect time. The seven coming month, is going to decide maybe the fate of many countries for the coming maybe 50 years. Saudi Arabia, 
they are going to run as soon as possible and i think saudi arabia will never sign peace agreement with israel until trump become a president again uh, we don't know if that will happen and uh, i i believe trump he can win the election easy but if the the scumbag biden and his party were able to steal the election first time so how they why they will not be able to steal it second time that's a good question isn't it and if they were able to steal the election when they are not in the office how easier is going to be when they are in charge of department of justice government fbi cia so it's going to be maybe mission impossible for biden to lose even though he is the biggest loser in history but we will see at the end i want to say that israel in the last 48 hours they killed tons of hezbollah leaders in the south of lebanon and iran is using hezbollah to give israel no comfort zone they don't want to go at war but they don't want to stop and have peace israeli israeli government because they are stupid they evacuate all the north of israel so you have at least 200 300 thousand israeli they have no houses right now they are living in hotels and airbnb this is how stupid Netanyahu is. So instead of teaching Hezbollah that if you shoot one rocket, we are going to screw you. He do really nothing. Killing leaders of Hezbollah is a joke. Again, those are Shia. They have no value for their own citizen. You kill one, they have 10. You kill 10, they have 100. They, they do muta. They have kids every day, you know, women, they sleep around for $10. They make babies as you cannot imagine. So when the Israeli, they speak, we killed half, does, half, half of the leaders of Hezbollah in, in South of Lebanon. That is useless. The major impact of their attack is when they hit the major warehouses for weapons, that's good. Drones, missiles, that's good. But uh, killing leaders is useless. I mean, if you're sure, kill them, no problem. But it's not a victory. The victory is if you eliminate their ability. And that will not happen unless the Israeli do ground invasion, not only drone attack. The Israeli, they have to repeat what they did many, many years ago in the 1982 when they invade Lebanon and they clean all this area from Hezbollah. And then, then and only then, you can have peace in the north of Israel. History repeat itself. They would draw and chose shame for exchange for peace. But they never receive peace, but they receive shame. I hope you guys you understand what I'm saying. I don't want to give you more headache. Uh, it's very complicated and ugly. But there's one problem behind all of this it is Islam Islam is satanic demonic wherever this garbage cult goes peace run away it doesn't matter where you cannot find one Muslim country live in peace by the way the reason Emirat they have so-called peace because their jails is full of terrorists the reason Saudi Arabia have so-called peace because they execute them immediately. The reason Israel don't have peace because they put them in jail and they put them, give them shish kebab. They don't even execute one Hamas. Not even one. In Muslim country, they execute them. In Israel, they give them Quran. They feed them. They jail them. And then Hamas kidnap Israeli kids and then Israel release them. And the game will continue because you have a stupid government in Israel, stupid leadership, 
if you want Israel to be victorious, bring them someone like the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, and then you will see how Israel will prevail. You need a leader. What they have right now in Israel is a bunch of potatoes. As simple as that. I want to say thank you all for being here. Is Turkey in the same path of Iran? No, Turkey and Iran, they are in, they compete. But Iran, they use the Muslim Brotherhood to penetrate. Turkey, they use Muslim Brotherhood to take over. So each one of them have different agenda. Turkey, they want to establish the Caliphate of Erdogan, the Sunni Caliphate. Iran, they want to establish the Shia Caliphate. So in the core, they are enemies. But in the process, for now, they are friends. It's like, you know, you know, there's some bacteria, they live in your mouth. Right? They live in your mouth. There's, there's some fish, uh, uh, small fish, they, they go inside the big fish, and the big fish don't eat them. Why? Because they are cleaning their teeth. They're cleaning their mouth. They don't eat them. They don't even hurt them. So this is how the relationship between Turkey and Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, they exchange benefit. Both of them, they are evil. They hate each other. But they delay the fight until we finish first. The one is in our way. We have somebody more important. You hate him. I hate him. Erdogan, he hates Saudi Arabia. He want to conquer the regime so the caliphate of the Muslim Sunni will be established. Erdogan, he hate Emirat. Same. Erdogan, he signed now deal with Emirat and Saudi Arabia. Why? Because Turkey is bankrupt. So his plan failed after 20 years trying to fight Saudi Arabia. He found himself bankrupt. The money of Qatar alone is not enough. So he decided to bow down and kiss the ass of the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Remember, Erdogan was calling him a few years ago, a criminal, a butcher, I will find you, we will get you, etc. He want to take him to the international criminal uh, court. Uh, Erdogan, suddenly Erdogan, he want to kiss the ass of the Saudi. Why? Money. Their currency is like toilet paper. The prices of food is going crazy. The country is bankrupt. So Turkey, they, they have an agenda. The agenda is to conquer all Islamic Sunni countries and make it under the Ottoman. They want to establish the Ottoman Empire using Islam as the Ottoman did before. The Ottoman used Islam as a key to control Muslims. And the Ottoman, when they control Arab countries, they rape their women. They kidnap their women. They are the most ugly occupation. You ask any Arab. They will tell you the most ugly occupation ever happened to them is when the Ottoman came to their land. The Ottoman cut their trees. They became the Middle East desert. Jordan used to have trees. They cut it off. Syria, you have to have trees. They cut it off. All the antique, all the, the, the ancient uh, 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 statues, all that the Ottoman stored it and sold it in the auctions in Europe. And now they are doing the same actually during ISIS. Ottoman, they have the most ugly history in the Middle East. But Erdogan now, he decided to ride a new way. It is Islam. So by making myself like the Muslims who praise Allah, I am not coming to conquer you as an Ottoman. I am here coming as a Muslim. We want to free Jerusalem. We want to establish Islamic state, not Ottoman state. But the reality is, it is Ottoman state. So, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. The biggest problem is Islam. It's not Hamas. Hamas is a baby rat of Islam. Erdogan is a baby rat of Islam. The Prince of Qatar is a baby rat of Islam. All the snakes of terrorism, every terrorist, every born terrorist is born out of Islam. So all of them, they share one thing. The book of terrorism, the prophet, the terrorist, Muhammad, who say, he said, I've been victorious by terror. And you don't believe me? You can search right now. Go, go to Google. 
Prophet Muhammad said, I been victorious by terror. Muhammad he said, I terrify my enemy from the distance of one month journey. So the terrorist Muhammad is the father of all terrorists. And all terrorists are born out of Islam. Every terrorist is a Muslim. But not necessarily every Muslim is a terrorist. Why? Because there is many Muslims are not willing to die for the sake of anybody. Not for the sake of Allah. But there is many. They are willing to say to die for the sake of dollar. In the case of Hamas. They claim they are serving Allah. And there is people who are really Muslim, true Muslim, like ISIS. ISIS are true Muslims. They are true believers. I Trust me. ISIS are maybe the best of believers. Like ISIS in Islam are like the disciple of Muhammad. Those are the best of Islam. So there is only one engine moving all evil. It is Islam. And Islam now moving your kids inside New York schools and Chicago. Because they betrayed the system. They knew how to strip at your kids. They knew that your kids are hippie. A nation of tattoo in their, in their vagina. A nation of rings in their nose, in their mouth, and etc. They are very confused. They don't even know what is male and male female. They were busy just a few months ago fighting about, uh, like, hey, hey uh, liberals, what happened to the, uh, the bathroom? I mean, for, for almost one year during Corona, they were talking about the bathroom before Corona. The bathroom for, like, they want to make the bathroom for female allowed for male. <laughs> so this is how they are. They, they, you know, they look for something silly, and now they found Palestine. They found something very silly to defend. And I say silly because Palestinian themselves, they will kill them if they go there. They will eat them alive if they go there. This is how silly those kids. And liberals are the same as Islam. Wherever liberals goes, food is damaged. You know Muhammad, because he hated the Jews, he said. If you remember, Muhammad, he blamed all evil for two. Jews and women. I say, I blame every evil for two. Islam and liberals. Prove me wrong. Wherever liberals goes, crimes flourish. Rape flourish. Theft flourish. Business insecure. Citizen, they don't dare even to walk in the street at night. The country is messed up. Wherever the liberals goes, same as Islam. Wherever Islam goes, peace, bye bye. Rapists in the street, terrorism, flourishing. Prove me wrong. Leave your comment, and prove me wrong. I challenge you. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince who has given you some information about the mullahs of Allah and how the rocket is going to go through their ass sooner or later. Your hate is your enemy and your hate will destroy you. I say that to you, mullahs. Religion of hate the first victim of it is the people who hate you. This is why you live as a wicked. You will die as a wicked. You kill and you will be killed. The Bible says, those who live by the sword, by the sword shall die. You attack your neighbors, your neighbors will slaughter you. You rape their women, your neighbors, they are kind. They did not even rape your woman yet. Filthy. You will get faith. You harvest what you seeded. And if you are thinking you will get the versions of Allah, I say to you, good luck. Prophet Muhammad already there. And according to Muslims, he if thousands of women every day. 
So I guarantee you, none of them is a virgin. If you don't believe me, when you go to the heaven of Allah, take any one of them to your bathtub and put some shampoo. If you see bubbles coming out, that means Prophet Muhammad was there. Take care. God is good, so is Jesus, and in his name we are victorious.